What's the next part asking? What are we looking for? Okay, oh, what a coincidence. Okay, let's sketch this. You can see it asks for all three graphs. My advice is to do them on separate axes because it's going to get really busy really fast. Let's just draw some roughly. Okay, everyone, just as you continue to draw those, you can see, and this is the lovely thing about simple harmonization and how predictable it is, right? You've just started with a sine function. It starts at the origin because your fa there's no phase shift to worry about. Okay, so there I am. All I need to worry about in terms of actual scale and points that tell me with height, that kind of thing, they're all things we worked out in parts A and B, right? Parts A and B? Have a look. What's the period? What's the period? We answered this before, right? It's two seconds. So that is all the way through to a whole cycle of motion. That makes that two which makes this middle point one. one, okay, not complicated. And we also define the amplitude, because um, we enter it over here. So you've got four and pi, negative four and pi, okay? Now everything else, when you have a look at your velocity and the acceleration functions, the pieces are the same. I'm even gonna use the same physical scale, but I'm just gonna label the axes differently, right? Um, your time axis, it's still obeying the same thing. Nothing has changed here horizontally, okay? So this is still two, and this is still one, but I have intercepts here that I better talk about. What are the intercepts? From the acceleration is... Can, so can someone tell me the numbers? It's just a half and one and a half, right? Or three and two, that's fine. Okay, they're intercepts, so I better put them on. Um, and I also need to know the amplitude, but when did I work that out? I worked it out in part C, right? Maximum speed, maximum speed. That's gonna be the positive one, and there's the negative one, yeah? Okay, and lastly, uh, you still got your zero, one, and two, but your amplitude now is, uh, there it is, there's my maximum acceleration. Okay, four pi and negative four pi. Okay. So this looks good. Let's look at the final two parts. They're just asking you about particular instances of where the object is and what it's doing at those times. So you can see part E. It says, find the next two times the particle is at the origin and the velocities then. Now, what this is really doing is just, can you read the graph? That's all it's asking. Okay, we in fact have kind of answered these. They have to say next two times at the origin because when are we first at the origin? Time zero. Okay. So when they say next two times, they clearly mean not this one, but this guy and this guy. Yeah. Which we've already put on because we did a good job of graphing. Okay. So party next two times at origin. They also don't just ask us when. But because we're still in a kid amount of context, um, what's the velocity at those times? Have a look. Have a look. There's one and there's two, right? Which correspond to the extremes here and here. Remember why? Do you remember why? Do you remember when we were doing this, right? When my object has gone to the extreme of motion, it momentarily stops. It's stationary for a split second. And then as it comes past and it moves back to walk back past the origin, rather, it's moving at the fastest it possibly can, uh, there and there. Does that make sense? So they have asked for velocity, not speed, so my sign matters. When time is equal to one, what is the velocity? Minus four. And, yep, I Probably should have said that as well. And at time two, you just need to know, oh, it's the other one, right? It's in the opposite direction. Okay. Last ones, read it and you can see what you need to interpret and which graph you need to go for, right? Find the first two times the particle is stationary and the acceleration there. So to answer part E, right, we focused on displacement and the velocity graph, right, these two. To answer this next question, we're still gonna look at two graphs, we're gonna look at these two, right? Find the two times it's the particle is stationary, where's that, have a look. Yeah, you can use the stationary point, but I've got, I've got literally the points of where it's stationary and I've even labelled what they are. So I'm going to say, uh, next two times when it's, sorry, is it next two times? First two times rather. Right? 
Time equals. Time equals. Okay, what are our times? 0.5, 0.5. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Um, and in each case, I'm looking now for the acceleration, which again, since these are the extremes of motion, they're the only points where you're paused, right? That means you're looking for the most extreme values of acceleration, which in fact, we've already answered. Right? We've already answered this. I just need to know which direction though, because acceleration has a sign. At t equals a half, which way am I going? And here it's the positive case. Uh, a nice easy way you can con con confirm that rather is at t equals half a second, displacement wise, where are you? Where are you? Which side of the origin are you on? You are uh, above, you're on the positive side, displacement wise, which means according to, I rubbed it off, according to the differential equation for simple one body motion, if you're on the positive side, then the acceleration has to be in the opposite direction and vice versa. Okay? Question? Yeah. Okay, so you can see, this is not too complicated. This is okay. Um, the craziest things are when they maybe change the, um, the center of motion because your differential equation gets that little bit more complicated. But I, I think you guys will be fine. Again, the calculus is not difficult. Like this just sort of rushes by. And it's all about interpretation. Okay?